we will look at using the net ca utility to create and configure listener and tnsm entries these entries are in, in files called listener.ora and tnsm sora in oracle home network admin if you want to run the listener on the default port 1521 with the default name listener you don't even need to have a listener.ora let me show you that right now i don't have a listener running So I can start off our listener with the lsnrctl command start and you can see the listener by default starts on port 1521 on the host name. Okay, Let me stop that if I want to stop it and it stops and it's no longer running. I have restarted it. You can see that it is running a process called TNS LSNR and the listener name is listener now let me use the nhc utility to create a listener on a different port with a different name so nhc is a gui utility i start off it requires x windows running so the first option is listener configuration i'm adding a new listener i have to give a listener with a different name so let me just give it a, a new name What protocol do I want to run? By default, it is TCP. Of course, I am not I am not able to use a standard port because it's already in use by the default listener. So I'll use another port, one five two two. Do I want to configure another listener? I can go on and add more listeners, but right, right now I don't need to. Okay, when once I finish, you can see that it's updated and started a listener called listener new. Let me exit from here. There is no exit button. Just use the cancel button. I go to the default location for the listener and TNS of files, which is Oracle Home Network Admin. You can see there is a file called listener.ora that got created today. And this is the new listener entry listener underscore new that's the name it's running on this host on this port and I can see that the process is already running ps minus dev grep minus grep tns shows you shows me this listener already running so I would be able to ping it also if I have a tns entry let me create a tnsm entry for that let's see again I can select what my naming method is so my naming method would actually be local naming that is the TNS URA. these are all external naming methods using other NIS or directory naming directory is uh, something like LDAP Oracle Internet Directory Easy Connect is uh, a, a naming method where you specify the host name port number and service name together on the command line when you make a connection so right now I'm going to use local naming which is the TNS URA entry file Let's configure. Let me create the local net service name. I say add. I give it a service name called my ORCL. On TCP pro protocol, what is the host name I want to connect to? Remember, the TNS Zora file is actually for clients. It doesn't always have to be on the server unless you're using a server side ut utility which uses the TNS or a file. So it's expecting that I run this from a client. So it's asking me for the database server host name, which I know in this case is ORCL server. What port do I want to connect to? Let me connect to 1522, the one that I've created. I don't want to perform a test right now. Should I? And then I just give it a name called net service name no other service name it's completed and then I can finish so if I go to Oracle home network admin remember earlier there was no TNS or a file so now let me see if it has created a TNS or a file you can see that it has created a list a TNS or a file for me just now
and within TNS to Zora it is created the net service name I specified my ORCL the host name and the port and what service name I need to connect to service name is the identifier for the database instance that is actually running on the server I could have multiple database instances with multiple service names each identifying a different application I used TNS ping to test connectivity to the listener I had already configured a listener on 1522 so now I am connect I am trying to connect to that host and that listener via TNS ping and the lookup is defined by this entry which is actually from the TNS to Zora file so that is how I can use netca to configure both the listener.ora for the server side listener and the TNS to Zora for the client side what the DBA could normally do is run netca from the database server create a TNS to Zora and then distribute it to all the clients maybe uh, there may be 10 clients there may be 100 clients there may be 500 clients the clients may be using shared TNS to Zora files from shared file servers or individual TNS to Zora files it is up to them so the DBA only needs to create the file once and distribute it to all the clients let me show you the listener.ora file again this is the new name I had given on the non-default port and then the TNS Zora file and this is the identifier I had specified for my da database service which is this one these two don't exactly have to be the same I could give a different identifier here a different alias for the service name but this service name has to be the same as what the database instance is actually broadcasting to the listener there was also a file called sqlnet.ora that got created let's see what's that remember when I started netca for TNS I specified local naming as my default so this is what got created sqlnet.ora got created for that saying my local naming will always be TNS names so that's how I use netca to create and configure all three files listener sqlnet and TNS names and for safety sake it also creates backups of the files before it edits them thank you